you know, shadows are dark, that shadows can be broken, and that we can, or you can, or anyone can experience light or happiness or, you know, joy. So um, this is kind of some new stuff that I'm working on that is that transition out of darkness into light. Different feel for it. The first one is called Butterfly Net. <clears throat> Harsha captures whispers like butterflies in her net. And when she releases them back to the sun, kissed with fear, they speak to her of unknown things. That's uh, this one is called, Who Is She? She has a smile that draws you to the page, and eyes that keep you wondering about life behind her skin. She makes you want to know about her, and the spirit that commands her steps along jagged sidewalks, and why she whispers when she talks. She eats lime instead of lemon and salt on strawberries. She appears enigmatic at first, and then you can clearly see she is simply lost. This one is untitled. He will love me eventually one day. The wrinkles in her knees beg for him, beg for him, her thumb somehow stiff and unable to commune with his neighbors. Balk in resignation, forget him. He still quivers from lonely ladies and eats sullen bread with sour So this is poetry and I love it. I absolutely adore it. I am a playwright, have a, a minor in theater, and I began to write plays. And when I went to uh, the University of Baltimore, they didn't have theater or playwriting as part of their MFA program, Masters of Fine Arts. So I had to pick something. So the first class I took was a poetry class. Prior to that class, I really didn't get poetry. I really didn't understand it or why people even wrote it. Like, what was it? But sitting in that class, I was introduced to something that had eluded me all of my life, primarily from, you know, uh, middle school until that point. It had eluded me. But when I sat and realized that I could do in a poem what it would take me years, and I mean years, to do with a play. Uh, I could pen a pen play in a month, but I've worked on that play for years. Dialogue, workshop, come back, write more dialogue, scene, making sure it makes sense. So I've always had that love for writing and words, but in class, when the teacher talked about poetry and the love she had for it, it was so contagious because I was already a lover of words and dialogue. It was easy for me to just swallow and take that. So since then, 2007, I've been writing poetry and playing with sound and playing with words and seeing how you can create a story with a space like this or a play, a hundred and something pages of dialogue, uh, 67 pages of dialogue. You're writing a, um, anywhere from one hour and some change to two hours worth of dialogue. So poetry became a very quick, simple, and easy way to still share a story, to still um, tap into someone's psyche or someone's pain and do it in a way that anybody can do. Anybody can do. That's how I kind of fell in love with that. So 
Any questions from you? Do you have any poets in the room? Or what did you think about the poems, especially the ones you got ahead of time? Um, any questions? Yes, sir. Did you feel like all like your um like your influence was it all from like people you knew like to like write like songs and write or you just wrote them however like you came out? The the actual collection? Yeah. People I knew. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much the, this entire collection. I zeroed in on the town that I'm from and just different sketches of people that I knew. And I began to um sit and not tell their story, but sit and allow them to tell their story. Yes, sir. What do you guys think about fortune? Yes, That was the, that's, that's what got me. That was the love I got for it. That you can say a lot for the movie. Because it's so different from uh, playwriting. It's so, so different from that. Somebody else? Yes? Like she said, I, I felt so different. I like kind of the So it, so it, it has, I teach poetry, it has that, um, we look at poetry from four dimensions, and I'm working with a group of uh, students now, and some of them, like the two of you, like poetry, consider themselves poets, and the other ones just were interested in a creative writing class, to kind of see, you know, what they had, and it has, and I say to them, it's, it's an intellectual dimension, the sensualist, the sensualist dimension, it's an imaginative dimension, and then it's an emotional dimension. That we, as human beings, we're not one dimensional. And as much as you may even think you're one dimension, or someone may have told you you're one dimension, or that you're only this and you're nothing else, it's not true. It's so far from the truth. We are multidimensional, even as human beings, there are layers to us. And poetry captures those layers, and that's why you kind of sometimes can get the depth to it, or you're left still kind of wondering or thinking, or grappling with it. And, and it just has that thing to it, uh, like that. And fodder, F-O-D-D-E-R, you guys know what fodder is? You know, father, food for livestock, father, and our lives, looking out the window, father is, can I write on the board? Yes, okay. okay. So when you think about poetry, and you think about what I was written, and you think about what you heard, and you think about your life, what's your, what's your name? Megan, okay, Megan. And you think about what Megan said. Prose. If I just say to you, you know, you make me sick. Oh well. I can't stand you. Oh well. But when you take those emotions and those things that you are feeling and you want to get that point across, to a person, for an example, heartbreak, or you broke my heart. But if I said, 